How does the Xiaomi 14 Ultra compare to the flagship iPhones? One obvious difference is that while the iPhone 15 Pro has a 3x telephoto and the 15 Pro Max has a 5x telephoto, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has both 3.2x tele and a 5x tele. Apart from the different size telephoto cameras and the bigger screen on the Max, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are pretty much identical when it comes to the cameras. In this video, I'm going to compare the 14 Ultra to the iPhone 15 Pro. They are pretty much identical in price when you match the storage sizes. So which one gives you the best cameras for your money? Before we get to the cameras, let's talk about the screens. The screen of the 14 Ultra is obviously bigger than the iPhone 15 Pro, but the 14 Ultra's screen also contains more pixels than the Pro Max screen. And that's because while the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max have screens with 461 ppi, aka pixels per inch, the 14 Ultra screen has 522 ppi density. Now, bear in mind that as I go through the comparison, the specs for the 15 Pro are basically the same as the 15 Pro Max, apart from the screen and the telephoto. And both screens in the 14 Ultra and the 15 Pro naturally support HDR. Both devices are driven by powerful chipsets. The iPhone 15 Pro has the A17 Pro system, while the Xiaomi 14 Ultra boasts the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And while the iPhone comes with good old iOS, the Xiaomi now uses the new HyperOS. All four of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's rear cameras are 50 megapixel, complemented by a 32 megapixel rear selfie camera. When it comes to the iPhone 15 Pro cameras, we've got a 48 megapixel wide camera, while all the rest are 12 megapixel. The iPhone 15 Pro main camera is a 24 millimeter with a large, f 1.8 aperture it has a 1 over 1.28 inch sensor using 1.22 micrometer pixels meanwhile the 14 ultra has an f 1.63 to an f 4.0 variable aperture as well as a bigger one inch sensor which uses bigger 1.6 micrometer pixels another difference is that the iphone 15 pro uses dual pixel phased autofocus whereas the 14 Ultra uses multi-directional phased autofocus. The iPhone 15 Pro has a 3x 77mm equivalent telephoto with a f2.8 aperture, but the 14 Ultra 3.2x 75mm equivalent tele has a bigger f1.8 aperture. The bigger aperture should be better for capturing light and as well for creating a shallower depth of field. And of course, the 14 Ultra has an extra 5x 120mm equivalent periscope telephoto. And when it comes to maximum zoom, there's really no comparison. Because in photo mode, the maximum zoom of the iPhone 15 Pro is 15 times, Whereas the 14 Ultra can zoom 120 times, So that's over 10 times the magnification. And if you're curious, with its 5x telephoto, the iPhone 15 Pro Max can digitally zoom up to 25 times in photo mode. In video mode, the difference is less dramatic. 9 times digital zoom for the 15 Pro and 15 times for the 14 Ultra. One thing that sets it apart from both the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Maxes is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's generative AI system that kicks in when you pass the 30 times zoom. So normally at that level of zoom, the photos, you know, they're mostly unusable. I think we've all had this experience. You zoom in that far digitally and you're not going to get any sharpness. You're going to get pretty blurry and pretty noisy as well. But with the Xiaomi's new generative AI enabled, it does a decent job at inventing the detail to give you crisper photos. It is a little bit hit and miss, but sometimes it does actually work pretty well. Other times, things can get a little bit Salvador Dali. 
but it's nice to have the option and you can disable it if you don't like it. The iPhone's ultra wide camera is a 13 mm equivalent f2.2 with a 120 degree field of view. On the other hand, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra has a 12 mm equivalent ultra wide with a f1.8 aperture, giving it a slightly wider 122 degrees field of view. Both devices have good quality selfie cameras. The 14 Ultra has a 32 megapixel sensor, while the iPhone's selfie camera is a 12 megapixel. So this might sound like an advantage to the 14 Ultra, but there's one snag. They both have the same size sensors, which means the pixels in the Xiaomi 14 Ultra selfie cam are gonna have to be smaller to squeeze them all in. And having smaller pixels is not so good for low light capture. And this could be why the dynamic range of the Ultra's selfie camera is quite poor compared to the 15 Pro selfie cam. Either that or it's just not implementing any kind of dynamic tone mapping as the iPhone does. As well, the 14 Ultra's exposure doesn't really work correctly. When I tap on my face, it should set exposure for my face, but instead it exposes the background and it does this wherever you tap. And also I've tried changing the settings, whether it's face or the whole frame that it sets exposure for, it doesn't make any difference. But compare that to the iPhone, and when I tap on my face, it sets the correct exposure for my face as it should. Tap on the background, it sets exposure for the background. So they can both shoot 4K video up to 60 frames per second, and they both use gyro EIS, or electronic image stabilization. So both devices can shoot 4K video up to 60 frames per second on all cameras, front and rear. And when you're recording video, the Ultra supports 4K at 120 frames per second, while the iPhone 15 Pro is limited to 60 frames per second at 4K. 120 frames per second is gonna be 1080p. Both devices have extra stabilization levels. The iPhone has action mode, while the 14 Ultra has steady video. In action mode, the iPhone 15 Pro is limited to 2.8K resolution, while in steady video mode, the 14 Ultra is limited to 1080p. As well, the 15 Pro allows access to all the rear cameras, while the 14 Ultra takes away the camera buttons. So you can't switch them and you don't even know which camera you're actually using. There is some clue though, because the Ultra 14's steady video comes in two different levels. There's just the regular mode and then there's the Pro version. And actually the cropping between the two is quite different, but it doesn't do exactly what you'd expect because you'd expect it to crop in further when you go up a level to Pro level. But actually it does the reverse. The framing goes wider. And I think this is because it's switching to the ultra wide camera for the Pro version of steady video. Because actually the iPhone also, when you tap that, action mode button, it automatically switches to the ultra wide, but you can also switch to any of the other cameras if you wish to. But with the 14 Ultra, you can't. So I do believe that Xiaomi has modeled their camera UI on the iPhone UI. For example, you can long press on a camera button to bring up the zoom wheel, complete with the focal lengths written there. But I do believe that Xiaomi have started to develop their own character now, uh, maybe going in their own direction here because I do like being able to swipe the screen to bring up all the main settings for the camera. With the iPhone, a lot of important settings need to be accessed by leaving the camera app and hunting through your iPhone's settings. With the Xiaomi, even lesser used settings can be accessed easily. You just swipe and then tap the cog. The iPhones have had cinematic mode since the 13 range, and now Xiaomi has introduced a similar idea with their 14 range called movie mode. They both use automatic masking to apply a fake blurry background to give the impression of a shallow depth of field. In the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, movie mode is limited to 24 frames per second, 1080p, and the main camera only. And also, there's no way to edit the amount or the position of the blur as you can with the iPhone's cinematic mode. As well, the iPhone 15 Pro cinematic mode works at 24 and 30 frames per second up to a 4K resolution. Plus, you can use the main camera as well as the selfie camera. And as someone who frequently uses cinematic mode with the selfie camera for my YouTube and for my Patreon lessons, 
for me is a little bit of a deal breaker that one. On the other hand, Xiaomi is really aiming their movie mode at more of a film look emulation. So although you can shoot regular 16x9, there's this emphasis on using a widescreen aspect ratio. And as well, you can choose an oval anamorphic style bokeh. Plus the movie mode adds a fake motion blur along with the background blur to add this real film look touch. And it also saves you from having to use an ND filter. So there is pros and cons to both, but I do still prefer the iPhone version. Both devices can capture photos in RAW format. In the 14 Ultra, you need to switch to Pro Mode and then choose between RAW and the higher quality Ultra RAW, which is available on all four rear cameras. The Xiaomi captures RAW photos with a color depth up to 16-bit, while the iPhone's RAW photos are limited to a maximum of 12-bit. As well, you can only shoot 48 megapixel RAW photos with the main camera. If you use any other camera, you're going to get 12 megapixel RAW photos. Both devices have a native 10-bit log color format for video. The iPhone shoots its 10-bit industry standard ACES log in high-quality ProRes codec. And for this reason, you can only shoot 4K log at 60 frames per second if you're recording onto an external drive. That said, you can get around the need for an external drive by using the free Blackmagic app. The 14 Ultra allows 4K, 60 frames per second, 10-bit log on all rear cameras without the need of an external drive. As well, it comes with a Rec. 709 preview LUT. You can even import your own or third-party LUTs. Again, to do all this on the iPhone, you're going to need the third-party software like the Blackmagic app. But there is another advantage that the iPhone has, and that's that it can record log with the rear camera, while the 14 Ultra can't. The main camera on the iPhone has one of the biggest minimum focus distances of any smartphone. So when it comes to capturing images close up, you're going to need to switch to the ultra wide or to the telephoto. Problem is, sometimes this isn't really that convenient. And as well, the loss of quality can show a bit. Meanwhile, the 14 Ultra allows you to get pretty close with all your rear cameras. And the advantage of getting macro shots with the telephoto cameras is you can capture the detail from a bit more of a distance. If you're trying to capture a photo of a bee on a flower, for example, getting too close might not be the best idea. So I think they're both uh, very good devices for uh, photography and shooting video. They do have uh, sort of very different characters though, I'd say. If you use a telephoto a lot, then probably the Xiaomi Ultra is for you. Uh, otherwise, I'd say the iPhone still wins because while the Xiaomi 14 Ultra does have a lot of powerful features, a lot of things feel like they're not quite finished yet. Uh, especially things like the exposure. For example, when you're shooting with the extra stabilization, uh, the two different settings are, look like completely different exposures. It's just little things like that make it not as polished as the iPhone. You can just see an immediate difference when you use the iPhone selfie camera to when you use the Xiaomi 14 Ultra selfie camera. Uh, I'm using the inbuilt mic so you can get an idea of what the sound is like but to me this looks like a really nice image whereas the 14 Ultra it looked a bit dark uh, there's some lack of dynamic range there isn't there but whatever smartphone cameras you have if you want to get the most from them why don't you join us on Patreon where I've got tons of lessons and 